This is Valley News Live at 6. Parts of the Red River Valley are already showing signs of the wintry return that our first alert storm team has been talking about. And as you can see, flakes are flying in the FM Metro. Let's get the latest from Hutch on what's going on and what you can expect tonight. Hutch? Well, this evening, things are really just getting started, although we do have some areas with accumulating snow on the ground already in the Northern Valley. Your travel conditions tonight, not too bad. Here's a look from our home of economy view in the Devil's Lake area with a snow building up on the grassy areas a little bit. Here's the impacts tonight. We'll have some sticking snow on the side of the road in many locations, but by morning, some tricky travel in the Northern Valley with a few inches possible in some locations. By tomorrow afternoon, many of us having measurable snow on the ground. Here's a look from the Cavalier area. Notice how much snow has coated the grassy areas aside the road. A pretty heavy band setting up in western parts of Grand Forks County, northern parts of Nelson County. Fargo Moorhead seeing some large flakes from time to time. The good news is some of this precipitation occurring where the drought is extreme to severe and it's going to continue. We do have a winter weather advisory for our northern counties until we get to tomorrow night. Temperatures below freezing and your hour by hour forecast for our first alert weather day tonight and tomorrow coming up in a few moments. All right, see you soon. Thank you, Hutch. Backpacks are causing headaches for parents and racking up chiropractic bills for some students as access to lockers remains restricted at schools due to COVID-19. Several parents expressed their concerns on social media today, stay, saying that students shouldn't have to carry their books and supplies around all day. They told Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley, something needs to change. In an effort to minimize students congregating and in turn potentially spreading the coronavirus, many school districts, including Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead Public Schools, have limited when students can use their lockers. He needs to bring his stuff for class with him during the day. So, I mean, what does he really take out? His coat? But the health precaution has raised other health concerns. Now, whenever it shifts, like today, the stuff shifted and he was at the top of the stairs and about knocked them all down the stairs. And while Cassidy Heelman wasn't able to speak on camera today, she tells me her child has been at the chiropractor several times due to the, quote, obscene amount of weight carried in her backpack. A sentiment shared by other parents, too. How much do you think it weighs? I'm guessing probably 20 pounds. And my son probably weighs like 70. It takes both of us to lift it, to get it on his back, to get out of the car. Most schools only allow students to stop at their lockers at the beginning and end of the day. And while many parents say they understand the policy likely won't go away with only a month and a half left of class, they're hoping for compromise. Some parents suggesting schools add one more time in the day, like during lunch, for students to pick up and drop off their books and supplies. I mean, even that would help, just so he doesn't have to carry everything with him all day. King adds, with most teachers vaccinated and local COVID-19 case counts relatively low, now is the time to lighten the load for students. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Local school districts say that while there is not a plan to change the locker policy this year, they say the rules could be much more relaxed come this fall. After the North Dakota Senate turned the controversial transgender sports bill into a study rather than an actual policy change, both chambers needed to come together to pick which version to go with. Under the newest version, the bill would enact the ban on playing for teams that don't match a student's sex on their original birth certificate. While the policy is in place, the state would conduct a study on the effects on the state, both economically and socially. As passed, the House version would have changed the rules, but senators demoted it to a study without changing any policies. Both chambers will vote on the newest and final version in the coming days. As part of an education funding bill, North Dakota State Senators approved a bill to make virtual learning a permanent option for students. Similar bills have passed, allowing schools to use virtual learning to make up lost days due to weather or avoid losing snow days altogether. With more schools making virtual learning more common, the bill gives students the ability to have their attendance counted for any day of the school year. Sometimes, you know, the in-classroom in settings are fine, but they need to supplement with something virtual or that. So it was, it's just looking to give another option. And when we have that option, if, if, if it's right for that family, for that school, and for that teacher, then, you know, having a way to do it and then having a way to account attendance and then a way to do payment. It passed the state Senate 44 to 3. The school district would need to have their online standards approved by the Public Instruction Department. 
The North Dakota Senate unanimously approved a new way for the governor to approach states of emergency. If approved by the House and signed by the governor, legislative leadership could request a special session during a state of emergency. Under House Bill 1118, the governor would have seven days to respond to the request. If he or she agrees, lawmakers will meet within 15 days. If the governor says no to the request, the state of emergency ends in 30 days. This bill sets a process and a consequence for not responding. It strikes a balance, and that was all I was hoping for in all of these bills, a balance of powers. Governor Doug Burgum has already vetoed a bill expanding how often the assembly convenes. His office has spoken against bills like this, but said this bill is the best of the emergency reform bills. The bill now goes back to the House, where it originally passed 88 to 6. A man from Devil's Lake is in jail, accused of sexually abusing three girls. 60-year-old Howard Studhorse is charged with six counts of gross sexual imposition. Authorities say that Studhorse forced two girls ages 12 and 13 to engage in several different sex acts with him. Bail has been set at $250,000. A former Fargo police chief will be nominated to head up Customs and Border Protection. The New York Times is reporting that President Joe Biden will select Tucson Police Chief Chris Magnus. Magnus's nomination is one of six announced for roles in the Department of Homeland Security. Magnus served as police chief in Fargo from 1999 to 2006. Dilworth leaders are set to take up a number of pets that a home can have. The matter is on the City Council's agenda tonight and they're meeting as we speak. Our Valley News team's Aaron Walling is there and he joins us live now for the latest. Aaron? All right, we're obviously having some audio problems, but what they're going to be discussing in Dilworth tonight is that they will limit, if approved, a proposal that would say you cannot have any more than four dogs or four cats or a combination of four animals altogether. As uh, Aaron would have told you, we will have the latest for you tonight on Valley News Live at 10. And part of that proposal also calls for adding a microchip program for pets that would take the place of annual licensing. Later on Valley News Live at 6, as the prosecution begins to wrap up its case, the Derek Chauvin trial shares the spotlight with a police-involved shooting. Snow continuing to fall across eastern North Dakota. Much needed moisture in the forecast. I'll have how much you can expect and where the snow will be the deepest by tomorrow afternoon. All of that coming up right after this.